Right, so we're booting up our PlayStation for the very first time, this time with our Samsung 980 Pro 250 gig drive. I apologize for the sound quality here, but I am recording this very much out of the studio to show you guys one of many SSDs coming soon. So straight away, as you can see here on screen, it is highlighting to me that it has found the M2 SSD there and that it's going to have to format it. So of course, let's let it do the number on it and format that drive. It's a very small drive at 250 gig, so it should be absolutely fine. As we can see, we've got a lovely reported speed there, well in excess of 6,000 sequential read there. So fantastic stuff, as you can see there on screen. So let's go ahead and click OK. The drive has been formatted and from here we're going to be able to move some stuff around. We're going to let it rebuild the database and from here we're going to start moving some of the PS5 games that I've already tested earlier on the inside console storage and we're going to move them all over to the new M2 area of SSD space here on the PlayStation. It's these games here right at the top and if we make our way over to the top we can go into the system actually no we have to go into storage there and as you can see there is our samsung 980 pro 250 gig with plenty of space to play with so let's move some of these games around let's make our way first into control and get that moved over so let's get all of these games moved over to the m2 storage so once again, we're going to go with all of the uh, the four PS5 games that I'm running through all of my tests. So there's Control, Man Eater, Destiny 2, and Destruction All Star. So again, not a vast amount of data there that we're going to be moving around, but we are still moving these games over to give us some idea how easy this will be. So let's go ahead and move them. As we can see, there's the four games. Let's move it over again. Not massive sized games there. But we're going for as many as possible, so we're going to let those move over. And again, we are moving from the internal storage to the external storage. We're not using any of the USB drives or anything like that. Um, so we're going to let those move over. Again, as mentioned, uh, the smaller drives, I said this in previous videos, smaller NVMEs have, uh, in terms of capacity at least, a lower sequential write speed. And this is something I've talked about in other videos before, that I know at the moment Sony... Um, isn't prioritizing um, heavy write, obviously prioritizing read, because when you're gaming, you're doing a great deal more reading than you ever will do writing. And on top of that, when it comes to console gaming, um, a lot of the stuff we do, like video recordings, and I was chatting to a guy, uh, an email on Thursday, just talking about how things at the moment seem like all of this data is being moved um, for the game data, but obviously all the background stuff stays within the console storage. And I think as time wears on, Sony are probably going to change that protocol because a lot of these systems, what has it got, like 600 gig after the software to play with on the core PS5 system? And I think as the software updates get bigger and the software services get better, I think there's every possibility that this is going to change quite rapidly. But let's let this move over now to the console storage. And then when it's moved over to the console storage, I'm going to switch over to a split screen view where we are going to be loading up games from the Samsung 980 Pro SSD alongside recordings that I've already done shortly before this while these games were being loaded from either the title screen or in the case of Control directly from the XMB to show you how they compare on the SSD versus the internal console storage. Right, so all four games have been moved over to the M2 SSD storage. You can see it there at the bottom of the screen each time I go into the information. And it's worth highlighting just before I proceed with the next stage of the tests that when I'm doing a lot of these, all the of the first three games I'm going to boot from their respective title screens. Because all three of these games, Man Eater, Destiny 2 and Destruction All-Stars, have a load of uh, designers and company branding that you can't skip. And I think that makes it very unfair to measure them. Control is the only one that you can boot quite cleanly from the XMB. And I'm going to leave that one till last. But all four of these games are indeed on the M2 storage, as you can see there. So I think the next thing we need to do, um, we'll just quickly show how that looks on the UI, is we're going to make our way in. There's our M2 storage there with the Samsung 980 Pro 250 gig, uh, gigabytes. 
And from here, we're gonna go ahead and make our way to the title screen on Man Eater, just to give you some idea about how these compare. And then I'm gonna flick into the side-by-side. -side. I probably won't talk through that, um, because they're recorded at different times, but the results should speak for themselves. And as you can see there on screen, I can't skip any of this stuff, and that's why we're not including it in the speed test. So what we're gonna do is wait till we get to the title screen, and I'm gonna give a little pause, and then I'm going to let these two games load simultaneously from the same save spot a few hours apart with the one on the hopefully the left hand side of the screen should be the console storage and on the right hand side of the screen that I'm operating now should be the M2 storage. So here I am at the title screen so I'm going to go ahead and get them flicked together now. Let's go. Ah, man, invert controls, man. Invert controls should have taken care of that. I'm right here at the start of the game, so unsurprisingly. And do you know what? I think that's a reasonable enough test. Let's make our way onto game number two. Right, so here we are on the title screen of game number two. Let's see how these two compare. Let's start now. I think that's pretty good. Again, these two were booted. Let's make our way into the next game. Right, so here we are on Destruction All-Stars. So let's not waste any time. Let's make our way into it and compare these two games playing together right now. I think this is all going pretty swimmingly, as I recall. It looks pretty similar to what we saw before. There was a slight delay there when I was selecting a character, but that was mainly my fault. Let's make our way into our fourth and final game. So here we are on our fourth and final game. This is the last one that we're going to be booting directly from the PlayStation's XMB main menu there because it can cut straight into the game if you rapidly tap X. So without further ado, with these two side by side, let's go. Straight in, loading into the game. Have a look. And you know what? I think that's going pretty darn well. This looks pretty much the same as it did before. 
And again, we will be testing other SSDs here on the channel shortly. Now we've got the beta, but for now, I think that's pretty good for me. And I'll be honest, this was a part of the game that was absolutely annoying that almost made me rage quit many times. But for now, let's make our way back onto the desktop there. Let's quit the game and let's move these games back to the console. One, to see about how that performance goes as they're moved back, but also so I can get things ready for the next SSD test. So let's go ahead and move these games and apps back to the console storage. So let's move those four back. Let's have a little look and let it run. So overall, I would say straight away that the performance there of the Samsung 980 was flawless to me. It was absolutely fine. Transferring games back and forth. One thing I would say very early doors is I do think moving games between the console and the M2 storage, there's definitely something of a slowdown which I think is anything to do with systems verifying back and forth, or the fact that we're dealing with smaller uh, game cab files, I'm not so sure. But the transfer of this data isn't quite as fast as I would have assumed. And I know in the past, when we have dealt with um, previous videos, like a year, year and a half ago, when we were looking at SSD use on the PS4 and the moving of games, as well as when we were moving games onto the external storage drives, on a PS5 for archival storage, we did notice that despite the fact that we were using storage media that was clearly a great deal faster than what we saw on screen, I think the system itself has a certain way of transferring and verifying data that definitely packs a little load there on the transfers. But nonetheless, I'm gonna wrap things up here. This has pretty much been uh, my overview of the installation benchmarks of the Samsung 980 Pro. I'm gonna be doing more extensive testing on the Firecuda 530, uh, WD Black SN 850, and the Sabrant Rocket Plus very, very shortly, along with, of course, that Gigabyte 7000S, largely because those are the SSDs that have got not only in bigger capacities, but also because these are the ones that take advantage of improved NAND, and Fizon controllers and seeing how they compare. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it has answered some of your questions. As I say, I know I'm seemingly cutting this a little bit short, but I wanna get through lots and lots of these for you guys in time so that way you know what are the best ones for you. So click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to stay tuned for more and more SSDs as we test them here on the channel and take advantage of both the links in the description and uh, the help and assistance in the free advice section over on NAS Compares. Sorry for the poor sound quality today. This is not the usual recording area. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.